Welcome to Mondo and Friends. My name is Mondo Fresco, and today I have a very special friend, a very creative, talented friend. Uh, he goes by the shoe surgeon. I know him as Dom. You may know him as Dom. Sh Dominic Shambroni. Ladies and gentlemen, here, the legend, Dom, the shoe surgeon. What's up, brother? How are What's you, going man? On, man? Thank you for having me today. Dude, I'm super excited to, to have you. I know we have had, we've connected many times. Uh, you've been to, to Hubwave to, sh like sh to, to show a, uh, a, a beautiful, I think it was like, um, it was a, a hey, Chicago it was a, one. Yeah, it was a Christmas pair. A Christmas pair that was like, what That's is all it? the glitter. It's the uh, high, high end textile glitter material. Yeah. yeah. He came. He came by uh, right before Christmas one year, and uh, we made a this really cool video together. And uh, we first connected. Um, do you remember when we first connected? We connected on on the pitch. We connected uh, at a at a soccer league. Oh, really? And uh, I was hosting the okay, soccer yeah, league. Yeah, I remember that. I wasn't sure if that was the first time we met. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think I, you know, when you, I think we followed each other at some point, yeah. and um, you you forget where where you meet people. You feel like you've known them for a while. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's when we first initially met, and uh, it's it's dope. Whenever I meet someone. Um, when it's soccer related, yeah, I think it's always a cool vibe because it's not like in it wasn't like in part of the industry per se. Right, right. You meet someone, you know, doing what what they love, or you know, if you go watch a soccer match or something. I think it's it's a little more organic way to to meet someone. Yeah, no, I think soccer is is a is a good way to connect. It's like you don't think about the other, you know. Yeah. The, the, the business or you know the industry like you said it's just down to earth sport yeah you know and it like you let your guard down it's just like it's a dope place to be so yeah now i remember meeting meeting you there yeah man shout was out that, to, like four or five years ago i think so yeah shout out to the association shout yep. out to uh kicks to the pitch uh shout out to bumpy pitch shout out to the whole fam uh, over there now, Dom. I want to talk about uh, take us back to when you first started your journey. Uh, we got a lot of people that love when we when I went to to your studio the other day and and posted our photo. People were like geek that we were, you know, going to do something together and uh, excited to have you here on on this on this episode. Um, people were excited, like, "Yo, what are you going to do?" What, What's going on? Uh, they thought the air frescoes were coming out, <laughs> but uh, those are gonna wait a little bit. <laughs> Once your your schedule clears up, man, we'll we'll talk. Uh, but yeah, man, you know, you are are loved by by many by the culture, and uh, you know, people are very excited to to hear your story, man. So take us back uh, to when you know you first had that that itch to to design you know when you were like you know what this is this is what i want to do i mean it goes back to my childhood even further than even getting into the shoes i was always creative and building and uh you know started by building legos started by uh, painting my room you know drawing and painting in class it's the one thing that like kept me uh focused was my art and then um uh, my next door neighbor was a contractor, so I used to go with him and just build houses, or at least watch him build houses. Yeah. And in you know, uh, grade school, middle school, I was building three, like uh, two-story forts in my backyard with hammer and nails, and um, so I was always like a builder and a and a, and a creative. And then um, middle school, uh, I had an older brother, so he had a bunch of friends. He was on a competitive soccer league and. He had tons of friends, and I used to hang out with all of them. And one of the guys, shout out to Jesus, was uh, he loved fashion, he loved dressing. So he would uh, he got me into like just fashion. So I was starting just to dress cooler, and 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 then that's when my freshman year in high school, I wore the original '85s that my cousin let me uh, borrow. Wow! And 
everyone just went crazy when I had them on my feet. And like at that time, I was just like, oh, like it was a way for me to connect to people without actually having to be outspoken verbally, but like by what I was wearing, it attracted other people and they would create a conversation. And what I found out about myself is I used to think I was um, introverted, yet I think I'm truly extroverted in just a different way where, you know, I was creating these shoes to, to be seen and, and to, to create a voice. And um, after wearing those first pair of shoes and I needed to keep finding that feeling of what's the next best shoe, because once you wear one shoe once, it's kind of like, it's done. Yeah. So it was like, all right, I was, I was working in the mall and then I was get the shoes early before they were even released and go to Foot Locker and I'd be wearing them. And it was the same thing. They would just come up like tripping, like, how'd you get them? So I knew there was something special in like getting these shoes. And then after that, all my friends had the same shoes. So it didn't feel special anymore. And that's when I airbrushed a pair of all white Air Force Ones, and went to school and I got that same feeling. And then it flipped from like, the sh what the shoe was going to be to like the quality because the paint fell off right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, I need to figure out how to get better paint. And then it was a progression of that. Yeah, man. It's crazy how you were talking about how you would go to school and all your friends would have the same shoe. This, this is, this is pre bots. This yep. is pre re like resale game. Well, it's dope though that we all got our, <laughs> at least we all got our shoes at this time you can't even get them that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like 2000 yeah you'd go to school and like everyone had the concords or everyone had the you know whatever shoe yeah. came out at that point uh so you so you're now uh starting to to get a little more creative uh you're starting to buy you know better quality products yeah. to like customize so at you know during, then during high school, I found better quality paint through a, another customizer, you know, started asking around like, yo, like just through the, through the network, like, yo, uh, you know, I'm trying to find better paint. And this guy was like, oh, you gotta, you gotta talk to a ghost. And he was like a uh, customizer in my town that did the dopest, like hand paint, used, used leather Angelus paint. And then uh, met with him and he was cool enough to be like, yo, you gotta go to Berkeley, which was like an hour away from my hometown. And I went there, grabbed some paints, and started hand painting shoes. And then, you know, everyone wanted me to do their shoes. And uh, I didn't like painting. I wanted to learn more. My grandma bought me my first home sewing machine in high school. Uh, I used to make custom t-shirts with inlays, cut them open, sew them. And then I made my, uh, well, I had help making my prom tux. It was all camouflage with Air Force Ones with the... Uh, Camouflage swoosh uh, glued on. Is there photos of that? Yeah, somewhere. We got to find it. <laughs> we got to find it. Um, and then after that, barely graduated high school. And I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, where my uncle was. And my grandmother I helped her move from Houston. And um, it was definitely a place that opened my eyes to culture and customization. You could go into a mall over there and there's people airbrushing t shirts and shoes. And uh, I met a customizer out there that was, he painted the um, Super Bowl cleats for the Carolina Panthers when they were in the Super Bowl in 2004, which they, they didn't win. But it was just cool to be like, meet someone that like did something at grand scale. I was like, yeah. oh, that's sick. So there's, you know, this, there's really something here. And then just, we we'll just poke my head around. I went to a, a streetwear store called Niche Market. Uh, it has like Stussy and like, very selective stuff it was it was doper, you know, to go from like a pack sun to see like something more exclusive and like cool. Uh, and then uh, asked him to customize some shoes, took some of it, some vans, pieced some shit together, brought it to a shoe repair shop. They had it done in like three days. And then it just like opened my, my, my mind more. I was like, oh, if they can do it, I can figure it out. I moved back to Northern California where, because I got in trouble, um, I was always getting in trouble. <laughs> um, and that's when I started searching out shoe repair shops because that was what I knew. And, uh, the first shoe repair shop was like, you get out of here. You're going to steal my business. And I was 19, 18, 19 at the time. Man. I was just kind of, I, I just didn't understand how someone could think like that. But the same day I went down the street to another shoe repair shop. Um, and he was, I don't know if you've been to a shoe repair shop before, but it's very, it's not the most glamorous business. Right. Right. 
it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of chemicals and uh, it's a industry. He was busy. At least he was able to kind of talk to me. He had just uh, passed away, I think, a month ago, RIP to oh, Tate. Um, and then uh, same day, I went down to a, uh, another shoe repair shop, and uh, his name was Daryl Fazio. He was an older Italian guy, and he, he loved to talk. So me and him kind of clicked at the beginning. He's like, yo, you need to get this machine and this. And then, you know, he was at least helping me find a machine. And then uh, I said, hey, I want to learn. Can I come back behind the counter? And originally said no, which was kind of, you know, disheartening. And then I, the, same, the next day I went back and just kept watching because I was so intrigued by what, it, you know, what, they were do what he was doing. He was just fixing boots and like fixing heels, but it was like, it was intriguing because I was yeah. like, yo, I can use this stuff to create my art. Eventually he saw that I was serious and he's like, all right, come, come here. And then I started fixing, I started, uh, I guess, apprenticing for him for free just for to learn where I would uh, fix purses, heels, um, boot, do boot soles and uh, just, just to learn. Yeah. And then eventually he started bringing my stuff and he would help me with my stuff. And at the same time, I was working at the front desk at a gym, and uh, I met this other shoe, uh, an actual shoemaker that made these crazy cowboy boots or Western boots, uh, like very high expensive stuff with exotics and such. And uh, he was in Sebastopol, California, which was 15 minutes away. And uh, so I just got to see all of these different things happening, I, a shoe repair and then a, a Western bootmaker that measured your foot. And I got to see how passionate it was. I didn't. I never learned how to make a a, a boot. Yeah. A Western boot. Um, but I got to see how much he cared about the craft, and he was the one that got me into exotics. Um. Uh, yeah. So all of these things kind of came together uh, to to for me to kind of get to where I was going. Do you feel like that was a, a an early way of you networking because how does it oh yeah i mean most of my stuff is networking that's what people don't get like yeah. i got someone says get out of here most people quit yeah i'll just keep going like i like when people tell me no it, it feels me to like keep figuring out when someone tells me no like i'll figure out how to get it done you know like and that's what networking is i mean you know I, i've listened to interviews with diddy and like how he got started it's the same thing like you go ask and, until and, and have proof, too, that you're serious. Yep. And that's what people ask me. Like, what's the, what's the most important thing? It's like being authentic, being a good person, yet also just networking. Yeah. People don't understand the, the power of networking. Don't be afraid to get turned down. Don't be, don't be too cool to, like, talk to someone. Like, I talk to everyone. Everyone. Because you can get something out of everything in a, in a, in a positive way. How? Yeah, because how does it come out that someone is doing these you know customizing for the pan panthers and you know how you met someone at, at at the uh where you were working the front office um at the gym like how how does that how do you even find that out you like, just oh. talk about it and it's yeah. like a lot of people don't like talking about themselves and it wasn't necessarily me talking about myself but it's talking about my passion and what i'm what i'm working towards yeah so i put that energy out there like yo i make sh custom shoes and everyone knew i was the custom shoe guy so you know when um one of the sales women uh signed up this guy that made shoes she came up to me she's like yo this guy makes shoes and i was like what are you talking about yeah because she knew i was the, i'm the shoe guy so she's like you got to meet him i was like all right cool so you just got to put that you got to put that energy out there you know you don't worry about getting turned down and that's yeah that's what it's about man a lot of people are embarrassed to share what they do or what they want to do, right? Because of what oh, yeah. they're going to hear. Like, oh, yeah. you, oh, you're, you want to do that? Yo, everybody wants to do that. Or yep. you want to do that? Like, big deal. Like, you have to put it out. Right. Because, like you said, how someone introduced you to this person because they knew what you did and what your passions were. Yeah. If if you're not talking about it, no one's going to know. Yep. My, um, what is, uh, there's a, a Spanish saying, uh, si uno no habla, Dios no lo oye, right? If you don't speak, God won't hear you. And it kind of goes back to that. Like you have to yeah. be vocal about 
what you love, uh, you know, what you want to do with your life, your career, because you may not make that personal connection with the person that is going to maybe change your life, but you will con you know, you're what, like, uh, maybe one degree, two degrees away from, from that person. Yeah. And, and, uh, like you said, man, networking is, is key, man. I want to talk about, uh, when you were, you know, getting out of your, your parents' place. Um, I know you, you left California to Charlotte and then you came back to California. Yeah. Um, because you, you said you, you, you were getting in trouble yep. <laughs> into trouble. And, uh, you, you came back home when it was time to, to leave home again. Um, as a Latino American, it's a lot of pressure, uh, to leave home and not, uh, not go back. Right. Um, once I left home, I felt a lot of pressure, like, all right, now you gotta, you gotta figure it out and, and prove to your family that you can do this yeah that you can follow your dreams and you're going to succeed you as a as a italian american did yeah. you did you feel that from your family uh, yeah it was, it was very similar um it took me a long time to actually leave home like i mean i left sh to charlotte but i was also with family you know so that made that easier for me at the time um but then when i moved back home i had my own place which was still like a lot because you know i was uh yeah it was it was hard to get out of the the, the loving like family that you know we my parents fed it's italian culture is a lot like mexican culture you know and uh yeah it was it was tough it took me till i was 26 to move to la you know, and I've been coming down to LA since I was 21 and I made the network in LA since I was 21. Yeah. But it was like, it just, it was hard to do. You know, I was dealing with, um, being diagnosed bipolar. I was dealing with drug and alcohol, uh, abuse to myself. And it was hard for me to leave whatever home was. And, um, so you are, are diagnosed as, as bipolar. I know when, when that happened, you hadn't even heard of, yep. of bipolar. Yep. Um, how did you overcome? How did you come yeah, so out age, of that? So time? like age, from age 21 to 24, I was very just unhealthy. A lot of drugs and alcohol, partying, being, just not being healthy. Um, which I've learned about, you got to take care of yourself. Um, so then after uh, some drug use and a lot of stress, I was making shoes for Justin Bieber at the time and ended up jumping out of a window straight through the glass on the concrete. Oh, man. And uh, went to the hospital um, and they diagnosed me bipolar. I didn't know what that meant. I was like, what does that mean? And then they put me in a mental hospital and they said I needed to be on pills for the rest of my life. So then I, you know, instantly was depressed and uh, trying to figure out what was going on. And, you know, my mom doing her best, you know, when a doctor tells our parents something, they believe them, you know, and I'm very skeptical, skeptical about many things. And now more so than ever, like I need to get three, uh, I need three people to tell me something before I believe yeah. it kind of <laughs> different, different types of people think even then I still won't believe it. Uh, so yeah, I was diagnosed bipolar and uh, I was on pills and uh, it me up i wasn't creative anymore i was very uh just like you know i was just like a zombie yeah uh ended up going out drinking and partying to to feel alive again and then went ended up in the hospital again and uh that's when i found uh soccer again football right like that's when the super bowl or the, excuse me that's when world cup the world cup was yeah. happening and like we got a group you know i had i i bought a i got a new dog and i just started walking my dog i lost like five pounds because i was like 200 and something pounds because the pills make you gain a lot of weight yeah and uh that's when um uh, yeah then i just started taking care of myself started eating healthier i learned about chinese medicine and see i saw started seeing an herbalist started seeing like a Tai Chi coach to like get centered and grounded and started playing soccer at a competitive again with friends and family. 
and that shit really brought me back to um who i was yeah and uh my identity and you know right after that time that's when it was like yo it's time to to make that move to la yeah do you think that because you're a uh, uh, an italian american soccer is, is close to your heart um or is it because you just love the sport i love playing the sport like i don't even know the teams i don't know who plays on the teams other than the big people i think it's just because i grew up playing it and it's the one thing you know no matter what people say about you know loving what you do with your business yeah i got no worries when i play soccer like i don't think about anything else except for just being on the pitch and playing and like winning and like yep. having fun and, and and creating a show um yeah i don't know it's just just i mean my dad grew up playing uh football he never played soccer oh wow so yeah i don't know it's yeah it's just something i loved love to to play yeah because when you're you're playing you have like this your goal is now to make plays. Your goal is now to, to make goals, to score. Yeah. Um, and something, it's therapy. Yep. It's therapy being on, on the pitch or on the, on the yeah. hardwood if you're playing indoor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's just, yeah, it's a good way to be, get connected with yourself and not worry about anything else. It's definitely a therapy. So, yeah, soccer, you know, fo- soccer definitely and everything else kind of brought me back to my identity and, like, I think what I've been learning even to this day is like just sometimes you get disconnected with yourself and then you can reconnect. And that was a way for me to reconnect. And, you know, at age 24 or whatever the age was, 25, like you don't, you don't, I never learned about any of that stuff. I didn't know what being connected to yourself was. And I had a mentor uh, at that time who was from LA who had a, a shoe brand and he, dealt with a lot of health stuff and like he knew about um how disconnected some of the western medicine was and what they push on you so it was cool to be able to talk to him and kind of see things in his eyes too now this next section of the program is sponsored by verizon verizon has partnered up with oi health to offer discounts and savings on telehealth services in tu idioma for customers and their families and as you guys know health and not just physical health, but mental health is so important. So for this next question, Dom, I want to highlight mental health in nuestra comunidad, in our community. What are you currently doing today to take care of your mental health? Uh, soccer. Yeah. Football. Right? Yeah. Um, eat healthy. Um, talk to myself in, in, in a positive ways because I think most of us... Uh, you know, we are wired to just talk negatively yeah. to ourself and to what's going on in the world, react negatively instead of like see things in a, in, a, in a positive light. So affirmations, positive affirmations to myself uh, in the morning and at nighttime. Um, I mean, right now it's, it's it feels harder than ever, uh, but I see a therapist every, uh, every week which yeah. has been super helpful um, to, to get connected closer to myself. And um, same haven't in a while, but meditation practices and um, breath work. Yeah. Like deep breath work is really uh, helpful to get connected with yourself. I love that, man. You know, there's such a, a high importance to take care of your, your mental the same way that you know we take care of our physical uh, i say it all the time like sometimes we think um that we got to work out and eat right and that's all that's important like how right. you look um but what's what's here is 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 even more important man yeah 100 percent. it's it's very important to take care of your mental health and and your physical right they both go yeah, kind of go in hand. go hand in hand and um you know i recently started looking up to athletes more so than ever in the sense that I've become close with some of them. I, I never was really big on watching sports, you know, now I make shoes for sports players. That's crazy. And we've become friends, but to see like how they need to be mentally, physically, spiritually aligned to be the best at what they do. 
because you know it's this is why people pay to go watch sports because these you know these these women and men are are at the 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 top of the at the top just with everything they do so it's like cool to see that and uh you know that's why i started playing soccer again and my goal this year is to try out for a semi-pro team just to, to try out and get on that's there dope. and to train at a high level so uh, semi-pro indoor or outdoor outdoor wow yeah. i feel like that's that's even tougher oh yeah <laughs> uh, so talking about sports and athletes you you collab you create you customize you know these these beautiful sneakers uh is there one thing that that you gain from uh you know doing these collabs with with athletes uh and if if so what is that that you that you gain from from that experience and those relationships you think uh some is just a good collaboration good energy you bounce off of each other like ideas some is just viewers, you know, a lot of these guys have uh, big viewers, viewership, viewership, and uh, yeah, I think it's friendship, bond in a different way because, you know, I've been able to create a, uh, a, a different type of business and craft, so it's cool to see um, when players come to me with an idea and, or just want me to do something and I'm able to create it and it's like wearable art, you know, so it's yeah. like it's a craft and an art at the same time. Um, so yeah, I think creating friendships and uh, opening doors to, to new ventures as well. Do you have a, a, I mean, and there's a lot, a lot of people, but do you have someone that, that you enjoy working with, collaborating with uh, a little more so than that special person? Is, is is there one that stands out for you um, or ones a few that stand out for you yeah i mean there's a few for sure i think all are are unique in their own way but when pharrell came to me that was a huge one for me because he was the idol growing up he was kind of my like north star of like yo this dude's dope because i've i was following him since nerd and the neptunes album and like his fashion sense was different than anyone else yep. He was a skater. I was never a skater. I tried to be. I was definitely a poser for a short time. <laughs> and I knew that skating wasn't my thing. Um, but his music sense and style and just then, you know, to see him evolve as a, as a person and a human over the years has been amazing. And then he reached out to me to do a pair of shoe, uh, boots was, was dope. Um, and I look forward to continue to, to work with uh, yeah. him on, on new things. My goal is to to do a song with him sick yeah sick. um pj tucker pj tucker is a huge sneakerhead, and he knows what he likes and we kind of we really uh vibe well together and we create some magic together when when he wears a shoe that people people really respect him because he's he's really in it like you know there's guys that you know have big followings now that of course everyone loves shoes but this guy really loves shoes yeah so to do stuff with him is just next level. What do you say? Go ahead. And then of course Od Odell, me and Odell, we just did Black Air Force Ones to play in. Uh, that was fun. I mean, a lot of the athletes, and it's not even what drives me. It's just that's just an extra, you know. Like yeah. I like making shoes in my art for anyone that actually respects the craft and like cares about the craft because it's not just about the the product. It's it's the whole story that goes into it, you know, starting from, you know, day one. And that's what you're, that's what you're getting. You know, you said it earlier, uh, when you think about a, a, a shoe, uh, like customizer, um, or, or if you even go back, someone who, who, uh, who fixes shoes, it's not the most glamorous thing just off top. Right. Yeah. Um, what do you think you've done that has changed that perception? Because it has you, you've, I mean, there's been a lot of customizers in, in part of the culture, sneaker culture, yeah. hip hop culture, just pop culture overall, you know, prior to the shoe surgeon, but 
you've come along and you've built your own culture, man. What do you think it is that you've done differently? Um, you know, I think there's a lot of help because of Instagram, you know, uh, posting a shoe. You know, I was building before Instagram, but I happened to like post a, a custom shoe on Instagram and that no one really knew what it was at the time. And then it just opened doors. It got people to see things faster. And it, you know, it was a channel for us to share art faster, which was wearable art and shoes were, you know, blowing up. Um, but other than that, it was just building a true authentic brand and, and building a authentic store and like showing my story in an authentic way in a vulnerable way as much as um, I could to the world. And that's where, yeah, that's what I've created is, is never been created and won't ever be created um, again, because it's, it's my true life story and it shows my struggles and I help, un you know, people have helped unlock doors for me and I help unlock doors for other people. And yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I looked up to a few customizers and um, yeah, just someone, and I think uh, Swiss Beats said this once, but someone said, you know, sky's the limit. And I was just like, sky's only the view. There are no limits. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like where I'm going is, I'm not here to make, just a pair of shoes like it's more than that yeah you know that's why i teach and that's why i give back it's because and that's why when you when you come take a class i'm extremely vulnerable and i tell my story and i share very personal things with these different different students to kind of just share that i'm human too yeah. and i've been through and i'm continuing to go through mentally and i think that's the difference is uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm real i love that i love that and i, I feel like that makes you just more genuine that connection between you and and uh just people around you that can i was gonna say um you know the students that that take your class but just people around you man they feel like you know they 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 connect with you and i think vulnerability is is so important in in the times that, that we live in man because you know you said social media instagram people paint themselves like the, the world is perfect and i'm yeah. doing this and i'm doing that and you know one could get caught up in that yeah easily but oh, the yeah. fact that you you're like yeah that's what i do things are great but there's also these other layers too and i feel like yeah. that that by itself you know really makes you stand out man and it's much appreciated too yeah i think it's challenging especially being in los angeles and you know having social media you know using it for you know, the wrong way. Like recently I just got rid of my personal Instagram uh, and I'm off of my, the main account right now just to cleanse and detox. I changed my phone number. So I limit who actually has direct contact with me now. Um, I'm just doing something new for myself. And, and, you know, I think this year more than ever is, is the, is the year to take care of myself even more because I'm a giver and uh, a lot of people like to take. Yeah. So um, it's important to uh, have boundaries, you know? Yeah, no, for sure, man. Talk to me about briefly these classes that, that you teach. Um, you know, I'm sure there's people watching that, that would love to, to be a part of that. Yeah, so, you know, people come from all over the world just to learn how to make a shoe. And the shoe is just, you know, the shoe is just a part of it. Like, you, you know, shoes connect us all, right? But when you come, it's... It's a personal growth uh, workshop for yourself because you push yourself to do something very challenging in four days and you come out with a pair of shoes and you're doing it with a group of peers that you're doing it with and you, be, you build uh, relationships with strangers you be, that, that go on to build businesses with strangers. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's hard to explain. You got to come just feel it in, in person. But yeah, these classes have definitely been... Um, one of the most fulfilling things for me it's a it's a to give back to others and to create a safe place for others to feel safe and to be vulnerable because i remember going to school growing up it always didn't it never felt safe it just like i couldn't be myself but the way we teach um and share our space is more like a family and like you know no one do whatever you want like you know, as long as you're a good person, like as long as you're good to other people, that's yeah. all that matters. I feel like. 
and you have a a social media handle you have an account for that yeah uh, we have surgeon. we have i don't even know what it is right now we changed it surgeon academy yeah surgeon academy uh the shoe surgeon is the main account yeah surgeon academy where we teach shoemaking classes design now uh teach uh people development uh, a lot of these things aren't taught and if they are taught they're taught over the course of four years and you know what i've noticed is we don't have the you know a lot of us want to just try things out mm -hmm. so if you can go try a four-day class or a two-day class you can try it if you like it you keep doing it if you don't you stop yeah i think that's the way of learning for me i never went to college or i tried to and i just couldn't like i gotta be here for two years or whatever it was and it's like i i'm like very um distracted unless i need to be physically making something so i think there's different ways of learning that it's starting to come uh to come more so now and i think it's important for people to be able to learn by workshop based where they can just learn a little bit at a time um and see where they want to take it speaking of the shoe surgeon i know you came up with the with the name when you went to new york and you met like you met Pharrell and Hype Williams. You met all the Williamses yeah. uh, out in in, in in NYC, and you then decide to come up with a name. You start like, you know, uh, writing names down. Obviously, the shoe surgeon made it, but yep. what do you remember? Any names that didn't make the cut? I don't remember. <laughs> the sh probably the shoe doctor, where people still call me that. <laughs> the like, shoe physician? No, nah, people are like, you're you're the shoe doctor, right? And I'm like, no. <laughs> um yeah probably, I, I really don't remember you know and i just remember new york city my first time ever visiting was my best my favorite trip ever and new york city is so much good energy and just to run into you know pharrell and just this, this thing and it's crazy that it happened that way like i was like yo i need to figure out what this brand is or what this name is or whatever and like it came during that time so i don't know what the other ones were man now, I know that you've collaborated with uh, a lot of Latino artists as well. Uh, man, that is, you know, reggaeton, the Latin movement yeah. has been crazy over the last couple of years. You've, uh, you've delivered to oh, yeah. artists backstage. Like, how, how does that come about? Man, I mean, it, I think it really, I mean, I think everyone got to see what, uh, the Latin music was happening, but Jose really kind of re-pioneered that. AKA he, J Balvin. Yeah, J Balvin definitely like, you know. Oh, so you know, you, some, you know someone, right? Oh, you know, Jose, hey, Jose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah J, I mean, you know, even when, you know, he first saw my work and I was still, you know, I'm so busy doing what I'm doing, like focused on tunnel vision of my business and my art, my craft. You know, he hit me up and he wanted some shoes. I was like, Cool. I didn't really know much about him yet. And like, once we just got to connect, I got to see what he was doing and then his goals. And, you know, I saw him at an early, early stage too. And then to see where he took it. So he unlocked a lot of doors and made the Latin culture a lot more, uh, welcomed, appreciated, I believe in, in the United States. I was recently watching, uh, uh the interview with Unwell and, uh, drink champs. Did you see that one? Yeah, you know, I, haven't seen I saw it a snippet. And uh, he, he made a good point. Anwar was just like, uh, you know, the U.S. music doesn't need us. You know, they didn't, they don't need us. But uh, you know, I think now they're respecting it in a different way, and uh, it's cool to see Latin music where it's gone. Because I mean, you go to Europe, it's everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, Jose brought it to Tokyo. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's anyway. So back to the the point was. You know, Jose was definitely a pioneer for even me. Like he was one of the the bigger stars that was like respected my art, and uh, I think it opened doors to the other Latin artists as well, and it got me connected more in the um, the Latin culture. I mean, I grew up uh, heavy with. I grew up with uh, my best friends were Mexican. I would live with um, their families for the summers. I could only. I I used to speak pretty good Spanish. Really, my youngest brother is fluent in Spanish. I just lost it because I don't practice it anymore. That was that's another goal this year is to be fluent. But um, yeah, to see what he did and then unlock doors and yeah, and I think you know I think uh he's he's kind of.
kind of pushed artists to think bigger yeah or at least he's kind of pioneered it to be like it's bigger when he never said he wanted to be a latin music star he's like i want to be a world star yeah you know i want everyone and that's what he did so it's like it, it opened it just it when someone's there to like show people something more like it i mean that's even what you know i'm doing for other people like i'm sure. showing them more so then they can think even bigger you know and you need those pioneers and you need and you know, there's people that came before me that I saw. There's people that came for before him that he saw, but like you know, we're able to just see see things bigger, and it's it's a scary road sometimes because yeah. uh, you know a lot of people don't ever understand it. Like you said before, it's like you don't even want to talk about it because you're scared of being. Judged. You know what? You know what people are gonna say? They're gonna well, you, people are gonna say like no, and they're just gonna say it's not possible. Right. You know, so that's why now, well, a lot of people, a lot of pe things people keep to themselves because they don't want to be told, like, it's not possible. And now I'll say it and they'll laugh at me and I just laugh at them. Like, ooh. Yeah. Like, you'll see it. I don't right. need to tell you again. Like, watch you know, me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was a thousand percent, man. When I, I first started my career and even throughout my career, man, it's just been, uh, it's been a struggle. It's been a, it's been quite the journey, man. It's been like, you know, fighting for, for what you love and, and just having a, uh, not, not to be, not in a, not being cocky, but being confident is, is key. Like believing in yourself is, is so, so important, man. And, uh, that will take you a, a, a long, long way, man. Brother, I appreciate you you coming yeah, man. down today. Uh, before you head out, I got a few uh, fire, rapid fire questions here for you. All right. I hope you're ready. Is rapid it, fire. But what is it, like one word answers or what? Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, if you want to go a little in, deeper into it, you can. All right. But they're just pretty much rapid fire. They're rapid. And they're fire. <laughs> All right, Dom, here we go. Favorite Spanish word? Favorite Spanish word? Word. Si se puede. That's not a word. But. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. Favorite sneaker to customize? I think I know the question. I, I, the answer. I think I know the answer to this. Favorite no, man. Similar. It's really any. Yeah. It's any, man. It's, you know, the Jordan one's kind of the most prominent, but it's, it's, it's any. Yeah, it's really any. Favorite piece of tech that you use? An iPhone. I, I don't know. It's not a favorite. This is. I hate that. <laughs> I actually hate my iPhone, man. I do hate it. I want to. I I need to get one of those uh, light phones so my kids can call me. You've seen those light phones? No. Oh, yes, like, they're yeah, like yeah, super basic, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I need one of those seriously because I hate my phone. Or just man. get a little flip phone, man. I mean, it's like a love hate. You know how it is. Yes. Yes. Uh, what is my favorite? I'll take that. Your laptop, maybe. Is that where you do most of your designs, or are you like on uh, on tablets? I don't. I mean, I'm a builder. I build things to life. I mean, technology kind of just helped uh, spark the the stuff some more, and you know, media pushed it some more. But I'm a I'm a builder. I like building things to life. Best sneaker of all time. Best sneaker of all time. I like the Footscape Magista. Um, right now, I'm wearing a Footscape Chucka. But besides this, my shoe uh, that I'm working on, it's not out yet. So that one. Okay. Dope. Not out yet. Is this a, a shoe surgeon brand? Yeah, exclusive? it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a surgeon original. Sick. Yeah, so I'm working on that right now. Lastly, what's a nickname of yours that no one really knows about? See, I got a... I got... <laughs> Uh, I got a past nickname that, I don't know, I called myself or I had the, an ex-girlfriend calls call me. It was Dominic Dots because every time I would text, I would put dot, 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 always. <laughs> so it was like Dominic Dots. Like I, I used to throw parties with a friend and on the flyer it said Dominic Dots. I got to try to find this photo. Yeah. <laughs> hilarious. Well, Dominic Dots. <laughs> My brother, I appreciate you coming by my doing friends, man. You're welcome here anytime. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Oh man. Dominic Shambroni, the shoe surgeon, Mondo Fresco. Thank you, brother, again. And thank, thank you, you so much for watching Mondo and Friends presented by Verizon.